All right, in this video, I'm gonna cover a few different techniques and uses of alpha, transparency, glass shaders, all those transparent related situations. The idea for this video actually came out of a mistake I made in a previous video. One of my most popular and personally most favorite videos I've ever made, How to Make Planets in Blender, currently has 67,000 views. And I skipped over one crucial step and about half the comments are saying, I can't get the clouds to work. The transparency isn't working, blah, blah, blah. And it's my fault. I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to uh, show you how to fix that. But also in general, this is how alpha and transparency stuff works. So I'm going to start by making a floor plane, shift A, click on plane, S to scale it up really big. I'm going to give it a basic texture with a flat color of blue so it doesn't give us a headache like something bright and obnoxious would do. There we go. Nice and calm blue. Ah, relaxing. Now I'm going to make a sphere. Shift A. Mesh. UV sphere. And I give it a, a good amount of uh, polygon just so it's smooth. A little OCD there. I like to have it nice and smooth. Go to uh, individual origins. S to scale it up. GZ to move it off the ground a little bit. Okay, cool. So I'm going to press period on my numpad to zoom into my sphere. W, shade smooth. There we go. Now it's a nice shade smooth sphere. I'm going to add a material, which is going to be a, a cloud image from NASA images of Earth that shows the uh, cloud layers around the Earth. So I'm going to split my view to uh, get the shader view on top. Here we go. Make a material. You could name it clouds or planet or whatever and this is basically what i do in my how to make planets in blender video and this is where i went wrong i missed a few steps we'll get to it in just a second so if i click on my shader uh the pre BD bsdf right here and press Control t i get a, a node wrangler add-on shortcut which gives us these three nodes automatically set up very handy click open i'm going to go to this image i found i'll put the link down below how to get this for free very high quality 8k image of the clouds around the earth super cool a full sphere image because it is an equal rectangular panorama, which is a one by two aspect ratio image, and it wraps around a sphere perfectly. And with a UV sphere, Blender does all the hard work for us and maps it out perfectly. As you can see, all the faces are covering the image. Even the poles look pretty decent. Okay, anyway, let's get back to the shader stuff. How do I make this transparent? Let's say I want to have a sphere inside of this, which has a terrain and ocean, but I want to have a top sphere with just the clouds around the earth. Here's how you do it. I'm going to move those over here. And instead of having this go into the base color, I'm going to plug this into the alpha input right here. And uh, right away, this looks absolutely awful. So what's going wrong here? Now I am using cycles. I will show you Eevee. But what we need to do is go to the materials tab, scroll all the way to the bottom to the settings we never use, go to viewport display, down a little bit more, and here it is, blend mode. This is what I forgot to do in my planet video. And I'm sure this comes up with a lot of other tutorials and other stuff I'll do in the future. So this is just for all those situations. Now click on blend mode, go to alpha hashed and shadow mode alpha hashed as well. There we go. We now have transparency. So what's going on here? If I preview the image by control shift clicking, all the black pixels from this image are going to be transparent. If it's pure black, it'll be purely transparent. If it's pure white, it'll be opaque or not transparent. Anything in the middle will be the gradation between transparent and opaque, right? So let's go back to normal mode. As we can see, some parts are more solid than others and some parts are see-through. Very cool. I'm in the material preview mode. If I want to go to the rendered view, it looks even better. And check this out. We have the shadow cast onto the blue ground below. So we really know, yes, light is actually going through here. Why did I make this blue floor thing? Well, so that we can actually see through this uh, sphere that we made to really make sure that, yes, this is alpha and it is transparent. Now, the old way of doing this was we would have to use a mix shader, plug in a transparent shader into the top slot, and we would use the alpha texture into the mix. I think this is before they added this alpha input on the BSDF right here, because uh, I think like maybe in 3.0 and earlier, they didn't have this slider. So we had to do this weird double shader setup to get a transparency. That's actually what I did in the video. Now this still works um, because we're basically using this image map to mix between a transparent, uh, you know, nothing texture and a solid BSDF texture. So it works fine, but it's unnecessary because now we have this alpha channel and we can use that. 
Okay, now let's say you uh, want to use Eevee. You do still need to set up those material settings, which is in the very bottom. We got the alpha hash and alpha hashed. Alpha blend visually looks better, but you get this weird effect of it like being gone for half of the sphere because the shadow is just is not perfect. I don't know why it does that. There's math involved and I'm allergic to math. So um, alpha hashed is the better option. Now, what if we want the edges to be softer? I'm going to show you a cool trick on how to modify this alpha channel and how to make just the hard outer edge of the sphere uh, fade away into nothingness. We're going to make three nodes. Shift A, type in layer and use the layer weight. Shift A, ramp. we're going to go to color ramp and then shift A, mix. And I'm in a 3.4. They did change the mix node to where you actually have to select color. This is what we're going to use, the color mix. So plug in facing into the color ramp, color ramp M to B, the resulting output to alpha, and plug in the image texture into A. Let me rearrange just a little bit. There we go. So we got basically this going on right here. So if I preview the uh, cloud image, remember black is transparent. So we want the outer edge of the sphere to be black. What is this setup giving us? Kind of the opposite. So let's flip flop the colors. There we go. Now the outer edge is a nice soft black. If I zoom into the zoom into the edge here, there we go. You can control kind of the fall off there if you want it sharp or smooth. And we're going to layer black onto the cloud layer by using multiply mode. So multiply will only layer the dark uh, dark pixels. Let's preview the output of this by shift control clicking that and turn up mix factor. There we go. See what happens on the edge of our cloud layer makes it darker and it fades away. That's good. Let's make it a little bit more intense. There we go. Now, if we go back to normal view, control shift, click the shader so we can see the, see the final output. We get these, uh, the edges are nicely faded. You can see I'm not seeing any harsh edges. Pretty cool. You can see a little better if you plug this directly into the alpha like that. There we go. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? The edges just disappear nice and soft. You could also do it the other way around to make um, solid outer edge, but transparent on the inside. Pretty cool. You can see the shadow there. It's still a 3D sphere, but we have this kind of atmosphere fall off, which is another trick that I show you how to use in that, that other tutorial on how to make an atmosphere around your planet. Okay, one more thing is let's talk about glass because glass is transparent, and I'm sure people want to know how to make good glass. It's super easy. Let's get rid of all this crazy stuff. You only got to do two things. You got to turn up transmission, which allows light to transmit through your sphere, and turn down your surface roughness. Now, this does not work in Eevee. So I'm going to go to Cycles and show you what it's supposed to look like. There we go. We got a nice, shiny glass orb. I'm going to change this bottom texture to be a checkerboard so we can see what actually is happening with the light passing through the glass orb. There we go. Cool. Look at that distortion, refraction. I love that. How do we control the refraction? Super easy. Go back to your glass texture, scroll down, and just above that transmission slider, which again allows light to transmit through, let's put all the way up to one, we have IOR which is basically how much light refracts through your glass. If you put it at one, nothing is happening to the light. It's coming straight through to the viewer, no distortion. If you go above one, say 1.1, we get some warping. If you go below, you get magnification. Well, just like a camera lens, pretty cool. You can find on the internet exact numbers for each material, such as glass, diamond, water, and how much they refract light. Pretty interesting stuff if you want to be exact and photorealistic. Now you can control the surface roughness by turning up roughness, which makes the surface reflections blurry. Or if you want it to be a frosted or blurry glass, turn up your transmission roughness, which looks similar, but it works more photorealistically. Now we do still have the classic glass shader itself, which uh, is a lot simpler. We get a basic color, the roughness, and the IOR refraction index. If you want to get a cool distorted water looking effect, make a noise texture, plug in the color into normal. This noise texture is actually distorting the sphere. 
Let's turn up the IOR. And we get this. We can control the size of the noise, the level of detail, on all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, let's talk about EV. If we switch over to EV, things are a little different. I'm using the BSDF again. I'm going to make sure my surface roughness is zero. My transmission is one. My transmission roughness is zero, okay? So light should be coming through here, but it's all black. So what's wrong here? Well, EV handles light a little differently because it doesn't have ray tracing. But we, we can simulate some of that ray tracing or refraction by turning on screen space reflections. So go to your render tab, make sure you turn on screen space reflections, and then go to your material tab, scroll all the way down, and you need to turn on screen space reflections for that material. There we go. Also, make sure that you're on alpha hash and alpha hashed so that there will be uh, transparency with that material as well. And now with a little bit better view, I can see there is light coming through the sphere being uh, index reflected, which we can control with the IOR. And there we go. Pretty cool. To get a better result, you want to use a mix shader node uh, to mix between transparent and the BSDF we're using. And then the mix factor is actually going to be a Fresnel node, which will allow us to have more transparency in one area and glass in the other. So as you can see, we're mixing between just transparent flat and a warpy glass. So let's make a Fresnel node, or I like to use the layer weight actually, and then a ramp node to control the fall off. Plug in, let's try facing first there. And plug this into the mix factor. There we go. Let it load for a second. And there we go with adjusting a little bit of the um, color ramp and the Fresnel amount. It's not perfect. There's some kind of weird overlaying there. Honestly, I don't use EV, especially if I'm doing glass, ray tracing, anything photorealistic in the real world. I'm not going to rely on EV to give me good results. So I would switch over to cycles and just deal with the longer render times because it's just worth it. So I hope that answered you all's questions concerning the planets, any other transparency issue you may be having. This is just the basics. If I missed anything or you need some more clarification, please ask in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.